all over. Let's see. C I don't want to get in trouble. I'll stop right there. Hey, Patty Loman, what's going on? Oh, we have the closed captioning this evening. It is on. Check it out. Do you see what's behind me? Do you see those gardenias? This is my my Billy Holiday impression. It's a whole, it's a tree. It's a it's this ginormous tree of gardenias. Unbelievable. It is Sunday, June 27th, 8 11 p.m. on the Pacific coast, although I'm not on the coast, we're we're inland in this beautiful, you guys have seen this morning, all the beautiful trees and flowers and heat. We're having a heat wave, a tropical heat wave. Patty's here, I see that. I know Mama Grace is here because she's sitting right in front of me. Hey, Julie Luce, William D, what's happening? What's happening? Wow, this is cool. Uh-oh, what's in here? I don't know, but I'll try it. Anybody else? Toast? Cheers. Hi, Mama Grace. Why don't you hand me your phone and I'll find me. Grace sometimes can't. Can, do you guys ever have problems finding me? I have problems finding, not anymore. I was never into trying to figure out how to find myself because I have always had music. There it is, whoop, there it is. Music, music brings the, I don't know. I, Madonna's from Michigan, but I can't. Just take the volume down, down, take the volume down, down. She wants to see what the gardenias look like. Look, I'm so sure, it's so gorgeous. Um, Lots of birds, lots of other flying birds. I saw a woodpecker today and a blue jay today and some sparrows and this other really cool reddish kind of bird. I'm not even a bird watcher and I saw all that, but it was fun. <sighs> Tomorrow morning, we will be meandering. Tomorrow night, we will be meditating. Tuesday morning, I think Blanche is coming back. I'm pretty sure she's definitely coming back either. She was thinking about baking with Patty. She's like, I can bake and make with Patty anytime because she's also, of course, a master baker. You knew that about her, I think. Patty, she said you guys have done some baking together in the past. So I don't know, we'll see. But um, that's Wednesday morning and then Wednesday night, cookies and cocktails with someone. Thursday morning, we're chilling. Thursday night, conversations with the creatives. Friday morning, Armando. Friday night, display and share. Saturday morning, one more Saturday morning with Jeff Metzger. Saturday night, one more Saturday night with Gary Lambert. Sunday morning, we meander. And Sunday night is Musicians Square Table, which brings us to this evening. Sunday night, Musicians Square Table with who? What's going on? Frank Malfitano in the house. Hey, where's your video? I can't see you. Can I hear you? Hey. I don't know. There it goes. There it is. I'm sorry about the phone. I have to use the phone tonight. My I, audio is not cooperating. I think it's kind of fun. I think it's kind of fun. I just need to get a couple of thumbs up from people that they can hear. You guys, can you? Hey, Grace Mamina, what's going on? She's my mother's sitting right next to me. I was going to say you must be related. It's not a common name. Not at all. There's usually about two or three Maminas on, but I'm pretty sure they can hear you. Patty, Bill, can you guys give me a thumbs up if you can hear Mr. Melfitano? Where's your family family Hello. from? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Where is your family Hello. from? My family is from, my dad's family is from Sicily, and my mother's family is from Naples. Where in Sicily? Uh, Palermo. Oh, do you know where? No, I haven't been. 
I've been to Venice, Florence, and Rome, but I haven't been to Naples or Sicily. Southern Italy is next if I ever can leave the country again. I know. I know. My, my father's from Monreale, up in the mountains in Sicily, and then in Palermo, and then Patty Lohm and his family family is from Sicily also. So we have some Italians going on here. Naples, oh. beautiful. How long have you, I have like 9,000 questions to ask you. Go ahead. I'll start here. What did you have for lunch today? It's Sunday. What do you have, is, what's typical on a Sunday for you? Well, I didn't have what's typical on a Sunday. I had a, a, a BLT actually. <laughs> it was great. Did you make it? I did. Do you, are you a pot, do you cook pasta? Are you a? I'm not a great cook. No, I'm actually not a great cook. My mother was a great cook, you know, I mean, she was better than my grandmother's. I mean, she was restaurant quality. She was really special. I loved your mother's. I should have learned more while she was, you know, but I didn't. Your mother's you know apartment goes. was really cool. Was that an apartment or a house? Um, mom had a house, but um, it, the house had two flats. And um, um, I took care of her the last three years of her life. And the Jazz Fest office was upstairs. And it was a real honor. And I came full circle. And uh, and then the kids lived there after she passed away. And uh, so it, it's really, it's been in my family for 90 years. That, really, that building, uh, that house is in the family for 90 that years. House, 90 years, yeah. Wow. And then you just. Yeah, just... my grandfather built it with all of his friends. Yeah. That's how they did things back then. One was an electrician, one was a plumber, one was a, a concrete mason, another was a carpenter, and everybody came over and did their bit. Same here in Michigan with my parent, my grandfather, my father's side of the family in Michigan. Carpenters, they all built, my grandfather built his house. My father designed their houses. At like 12 years old, he designed their house. So Incredible. that's what you do. I'm really, it's getting kind of, are you hot out here, Grace? She's like, we're melting. So BLT, white bread, whole wheat bread? Actually, no, a Kaiser roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm fixated on them at the moment. So everything Kaiser, so you would do like a um, French toast with a Kaiser on a Kaiser roll? Uh, it was great, yeah, it turned out really well. Actually, it wasn't toasted. It was just warmed up. I like warmed up buns myself. I'm I'm hoping people can hear you. Uh, no one's giving me a, no one's given me a thumbs up, or they're not saying they can't hear you. Okay, they can hear you. Everyone's saying they can hear you from over here. I know you can hear him, but I wonder if you can hear him. Can you turn your volume up once, Mom, just for like nine seconds? And say something. Hello, it's me. We're a little delayed, hold on. I just wanted to tell Frank, Sicily is beautiful. Perfect, I can hear you. My mother said, go okay, to Sicily, great. it's beautiful. Yeah, I think it's, what is it, lingua, lingua, lingua grossa, grossa? Grossa. Is that it? Yeah. Does that sound familiar? Yep. Yeah, that's where he's from. Yeah, and my, my mother's parents were from Monte Corvino, Monte just Corvino. outside of Naples. Okay. Yeah. So how did you, do you remember your first concert? I do. Yeah, I presented a double bill. No, 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 no. The very one. first concert you ever attended. Oh, the first concert I ever attended. Uh, yeah, I don't remember who the artist was. I remember the first concert I played in with a major artist. Yeah, I was 13 years old and I was in all county orchestra. And I was playing third clarinet, and I was uh, I was in tenth grade, and uh, it was a sixty piece orchestra, and they had a guest soloist, yeah. trumpeter by the name of Rafael Mendez, who was absolutely brilliant. Wow! Change, it changed my life forever. I mean, I knew that night I was going to be in music somehow for the rest of my life. I just knew. I didn't know what. I didn't know how. I didn't know when. You know, I didn't know when I'd do my first concert or if I was going to continue to play after being a student musician. It turned out I gave it up after college. I really didn't play much after that. Um, but uh, but obviously, I turned a corner, and there was a reason I didn't play much after that, okay? I think it's an interesting story if, I, if you have time. Uh, I, all uh, the time. Yeah. I was going to... Um, 
community college. My father died quite young, and he was uh, he had just turned fifty. Oh. And uh, I was I, I had gone to uh, Fredonia, which is a music school in the uh, State University of New York system. And because Dad got sick, I came home. I, I really kind of sort of flunked out, actually, after about three semesters. I, w- I wasn't taking it seriously. I was a little too young. And I came home and worked for a while, and then decided to go uh, back to school. And I went back to school, and long story short, right near the college, there was a little bar in the 15th Ward, which was the African-American section of the city in Syracuse, my hometown. And uh, I used to go there. That was my study hall during the day. And uh, it was run by two Jewish sisters who were wonderful, Sarah and Rachel. And, uh, um, uh, you know, they said, you should come down here and catch the music some night. And they and the, the, the bartender was a, a tall American guy, but he had a stingy brim hat. And he was really a great guy. And, and uh, he said, yeah, you should come down Friday night. We got a sax player here. Um, uh, from Philly, and I think you would really enjoy it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I asked him if it was cool, you know, because uh, guys that look like me, kids that look like me, weren't going into the hood at that point. And so uh, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went down by myself, and he had reserved a table for me right in front of the stage, and it was so cute. And, uh, well, anyway, it was John Coltrane and McCoy Tyner and Elvin Jones and Jimmy Garrison. No! And, yeah. The first set was Naima. The second set was My Favorite Things. And the third set was Afro Blue and After the Rain. So I went home. uh, I went into the closet. I grabbed my soprano sax and uh, went out in the backyard, dug a hole and buried it. Burned it, right? I buried it. In the same house? Not in the house. Well, that was another one of those life-altering moments. Totally. I mean, that's kind of where I, um, about five years after that, I wound up presenting my first show. Which was? And uh, so I turned that corner from being a player to being an appreciator to being a presenter. <laughs> They're clapping for you right now. Bravo. <laughs> This is the long, this is the kind of the lingering crowd tonight. I don't, I don't know too many people other than, well, you're, you're a superstar in your world. There's a plane going by, sorry. What if you saw that band? You saw that, that quartet? I did. It changed my life. Of course. Changed my, changes my life just hearing it that you did and then who was so then you went to college you got out of college or did you study business were you no I changed majors a lot you know I started out in music and then went to history and then went to uh, philosophy and ultimately wound up in social work it was the 60s it I get made that. a lot of sense I get that mm. it makes sense and, and then I had, uh, I'm go, sorry. Go ahead. I, I had marched. I had marched with uh, Dr. King in 1963, and so when I got back to when I finished off at Syracuse University, Saul Alinsky, the community organizer, was heading up a program along with Dr. Chuck Wiley, whose daughter Maya Wiley is now running for mayor of New York, but. Uh, they ran a thing called the Community Action Training Center, and they were teaching community organizers. So um, I became a community organizer and worked with a lot of anti-poverty program um, type social service agencies in the community that were community-based. And um, and wound up working for one of them called Peace Incorporated, and we presented the Jazzmobile every year. So I got to meet Horace Silver, and uh, Dr. Billy Taylor and um, Irene Reed, Houston person, Etta Jones. I mean, it was it was an amazing experience. Uh, Milt Jackson, of course, Bags. Um, and so Jazzmobile was kind of the precursor for Jazz Fest. Um, I did that years before I ever produced the first Jazz Fest, which was indoors in 1981. And then 
we moved outdoors the next year, and then uh, we did it for 35 years. In the, in the town you're in now? In Syracuse. Syracuse. Yeah. And who was your first? Who did you present first? The first year? Yeah. Moses Allison, the Heath Brothers, and Kevin Eubanks. Mm. And a group out of Boston called Ictus that has a great saxophonist, Darren Hike, who plays in the Letterman Band with Paul Schaefer and also played for, I think, 12 years with Shaka Khan. Mm. Yeah, it was great. And Nancy Kelly was on that bill, too. Um, back when we could actually present vocalists and people would pay attention. Speaking of vocalists... Well, my, I don't know if you know, my, my second mother on the planet was Abby Lincoln. Uh, so I've spent a lot of time. My I lived, first year in Detroit, we had her, 2000. I was there. Yeah. I was there. And I, I was going to say Detroit, I remember. So that was your first year? The first year in Detroit was 2000. And my last year in Detroit was 2006. So I had seven amazing years um, as director of the Detroit International Jazz Festival. I was also artistic director for Music Hall Center for the Performing Arts on Madison and Brush, because they were the presenting organization for Jazz Fest at that point. Detroit Renaissance developed it with Bob McCabe um, and, uh, and Coleman Young, and then they turned it over to Music Hall. So Music Hall hired me in 2000, and uh, I had a great time. Boy, what a great city, what a great music city. I was on uh, cloud nine. It's a literally. great city. I love, I was just there a couple months ago, maybe six months before, post COVID. So April, May, May, three months ago. No, before we got, April, before we left. I love Detroit. We had a brother, Nino, that I know met you in Detroit. And that's when, when Abby was playing, we ended up going and sitting right in the front and hanging out with her there, but I know you've presented a lot of vocalists and I would like to know something, um, Aretha Franklin, perhaps. Yes? Well, yes. So I, as soon as I got to Music Hall, uh, we, we booked a, an American Masters series and um, I said, we well, have to have Aretha. And of course we, we had, uh, Smokey Robinson and other people in the series, and it was great. But uh, the first show I did with Aretha was um, in February at Valentine's Day, and and we presented her every Valentine's Day for the seven years I was there, and then we presented her at Christmas for the se uh, seven years I was there. So I did fourteen shows with her, and then she headlined the twenty uh, fifth anniversary of the Detroit Festival and also Syracuse Jazz Fest, which I founded and produced. So then, and later there was a performing arts center uh, up the road in Utica that was reopening after a $2 million restoration. This family theater, beautiful place. And we brought her in there for the reopening. So I worked with Miss Franklin 17 times, which was amazing. And I got to know her really well. I got to go there and watch her and, and went into the studio with her. I mean, it was just an incredible experience to watch her arranging on the spot and, and working with um, the horns or working with her backup singers or working with her core unit. I mean, it was just incredible. She was a phenomenal musician and a wonderful human being and a great friend, and I miss her terribly, and there'll never be anyone like her. She was astonishing. Incredible. Would she spend a lot of time rehearsing? Well, it depends on whether or not the musicians had prepared properly. If not, she didn't suffer fools gladly and the rehearsals were kind of short. She said, you better get it together by tomorrow night. So, yeah. I, I, I got to see her once in Chicago and once in Detroit and was in awe. I mean, that's the kind of thing, like the first time I saw Diane Reeves, I kind of felt that same way. I go, I'm going to say that I sing? What? What? I presented Diane Reeves. Uh, we did a uh, we did a Legends of Jazz series at, at the, the the college that I actually went to that I was mentioning to you. Many years later, I I, I co-developed an arts initiative with the president of the college. She was a wonderful, incredible human being by the name of Debbie Sido. She's down at a college, president of a college in Virginia now, closer to home. But uh, we developed this arts initiative, and she said. 
you know, let's do a series. And I thought, great, because we were doing the festival on on campus at that point, the Summer Jazz Festival. So Diane was one of the many artists we brought in, and she was absolutely incredible. I have She's never incredible. in my life incredible. seen a jazz vocalist do what she could do creatively. I mean, she just floors me. I had seen her before in Pittsburgh and other in New York, but uh, when I presented her for we did two shows one for the students and one for the general public she knocked me out totally now i'm missing something here i i need to back up here for a second um there are people here watching but my my screen is doing something really strange you guys so forgive me if anyone is asking any questions i can't I can't see what I like to see. Hold on a second. Yeah, Diane is, we've done um, Mount Hood Jazz Festival twice. Where, did you ever go to Mount Hood? The what Bill Royston presented? No, no, I haven't That was really fun and you just got really quiet. You there? I am here. Okay. Um, Mount Hood was too, this is it's not it's no longer in existence the particular festival but they had two stages an up and coming stage and then the superstar stage like yeah. and i played and then diane played or i performed and then Ro i got to see rosemary clooney i i performed and then walked over and got to see rosemary fantastic yeah she's a giant she's a monster although i would like to strangle mitch miller for ruining her career why is that? What happened? Well, all those novelty songs that she had to sing, Mambo Italiano, and and uh, I, I can't even remember now, you know? I mean, uh, I, I just, listen, she was a great jazz singer, and she should have been afforded that opportunity. But Mitch did that to a lot of people. He steered um, Johnny Mathis away from jazz. I mean, Johnny had an incredible pop career, uh, but Johnny wanted to be a jazz vocalist, and Mitch was in charge of um, A&R at Columbia at the time, and, and uh, it didn't happen. And I've heard so that happened. story about Marvin Gaye as well. Well, yeah, Marvin. Marvin could do anything. Marvin was another one that was amazing. Yeah. But, but I, I wanted loved early Marvin, um, um, all the Motown stuff. I loved, obviously, um, um, the, the what's going on, uh, inner city blues. And, you know, I mean, that's just... Timeless. I mean, one of the master masterpiece albums. Yeah, really great, really great. Oh, my friend William said Saul Alinsky was from Chicago. He was the Woodlawn Organization, TWO. That's exactly right. But he was in Syracuse heading up this program uh, at the at the university. I have very smart people on this show. I I just cool. think like all of a sudden there will be some some something especially william this just so you know we stream this from zoom to facebook live and then william takes the facebook live feed and then puts it on to youtube so you'll be on your phone on youtube too bad i'm holding this thing I know. <laughs> oh well <laughs> so are you doing anything in music now this moment this week this year this I promise we wouldn't talk about politics. Okay. Um, we got to the 35th anniversary of Jazz Fest, and, you know, the the year-to-year -year model of going out and finding um, close to half a million dollars in sponsorship every year and then going back and starting at zero the following year, that was fine when corporations were, were providing a lot of sponsorships. Uh, and the reason for that is I always wanted it to be a free admission festival because I really feel like the music belongs to the people. And my job is to get the music to the people and get the people to the music. So because it was free, the attendance was massive. Like when, I, when we presented Aretha or Ray Charles, 35 or 40,000 people would show up. I mean, it was just ridiculous. It was great. And you were the last and person in this country to pr present Ray, correct? Yes, in, yes, in Detroit. That's right. Before he passed away, and and I, uh, they interviewed me on some global television satellite thing. You're a superstar. It was, really, uh, it was a prof 
profound honor. Yeah, I worked with Ray um, several times, and every time was unique, and every time was brilliant, and he was a genius, and that's it. I mean, he was astonishing. I, I, I'm overusing that word, but these people are in the stratosphere of the music industry. They're they're the, the most creative geniuses that have ever walked the planet. So for me, I'm in awe of them because I'm a fan. And um, so just to be able to say to you that I saw John Coltrane, just to be able to say to you, I mean, from, from me to you, this close, you know, and to, to say that I worked with Ray Charles several times and I worked with Aretha, you know, more than a dozen times. I mean, well, it sounds like you did. Are, you work. You were. You worked with her. But when you work with people, you created a relationship. You were. You were friends. You were family with them. Of course. Well, that's the way to do it. And and I think they relied on me. They trusted me because they knew that I was gonna. Everything was gonna be blue perfect when they got there, and that that the audience would be enthusiastic and knowledgeable and respectful. And um, they never had to worry about any of that. It wasn't a lame gig, you know. It was uh, it was the real deal, and they deserved that. And, and I was always conscious of the fact, no matter what else was happening on the planet that night, that was the only place in the world that you could see Ray Charles that night was at my festival, and I, and and that. Thank you. Thank you for being here. What are your thoughts on COVID and live music and where we are right now? I mean, I'm, I, I don't think, yeah, I don't, I don't have anything good to say about that, Jenna. I think that people keep COVID saying to me, oh, Jenna, it's going to, it's going to come back and it's going to be wide open and you're going to be gigging all the time. I used to gig 150 di days a year. I'm going, okay, wait, waiting for it to get wide open, everybody. But I don't think it's ever going to be the same again in our lifetime. Thanks. And I think I think the pandemic has changed the way we all live, the way we all interact. And um, that frightens me uh, because we need we need that social interaction. We need that spiritual connection that that only comes the magic that only happens when the when the music is connecting with the audience. Um, but I'm not sure the concert industry or the entertainment industry is going to rebound and we're ever going to see things at the level we saw them in the past. And a lot of art, we've lost a lot of artists um, during the COVID period and some died as a result of COVID. And um, so when the music returns, uh, I think we're going to be looking at a very different scene. Like my friend Jay Smith says it's coming back. He's super busy. He's down in central coast of california and he's a keyboard player and he's playing vocalists it's another actually vocalists some places are not hiring singers again because we're super spreaders i've had this conversation oh well you know can't really have vocalists in the club yet okay oh in a club yeah yeah, yeah. that's crazy crazy i mean that's crazy yeah it's unfair and it's crazy and you know what's crazier is that half the population hasn't been vaccinated so um and, and i understand some people it's, are anti-vaxxers for political reasons but you know it's crazy because until we're all immune from this thing um life will never return to normal because we'll always be researching i'm with you 100 percent. right 
So, you know, I wish people would get smart and get vaccinated. Get a shot. <laughs> get a couple. Get a cup, take a shot and watch a movie. What movies are you watching these days? Oh, uh, I, I saw a really bizarre one the other night with, with Johnny Depp called This Must Be The Place. And uh, Francis McDormand was in it. And uh, you know if Francis McDormand in it, 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 is in it, it's, it's an indie. It's a big time indie. It's her birthday know? today. And whose birthday? Francis? Francis. Mm-hmm. Is it really? Happy mm-hmm. birthday, Francis. Mm-hmm. Happy birthday. Yeah, she's great. She's amazing. She is amazing. So Johnny I'm watching, Depp and Speaking of her, I'm, I'm watching the, um, um, the series that Joel and Ethan Cohen did. I, I'm obviously years late getting to it, but I just watched three seasons of Fargo. Oh, it, oh, oh, oh. The series. Yeah. I've never watched it's that. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. I've never watched it because I'll be honest with you, the first, the movie kind of upset me a little bit. Well, and, this is, uh, yeah, I don't think this is upsetting. I think it's interesting. I think it's, it's uh, black comedy, but it's, it's really well done. They're brilliant. They're absolutely yeah, they brilliant. Are. They're brilliant. They are. So do you, are you a Netflix guy? Are you an Amazon guy? What, how do you do? You, are you a DVD guy? What do you do? What's. We all, this, yeah. this, my, the, the people yeah. that are here tonight, everyone's always learning from each other, what they're watching, what they're eating, you know, what they're drinking, what music they're listening to. So go for it. I, wa- I watch them all. I watch all of the streaming services. Yeah. Amazon prime Hulu. Um, we've got a bunch and, um, I, I love film as much as I do. I had the good fortune to work with, um, the International Film Festival people here in town for a few years, and uh, I really, really enjoyed it. You know, um, we Miles Davis's nephew came in for the Don Cheadle film, Miles Ahead, and that was yeah, that was really cool. And I I got to work with um, Edward Olmos's son. He did um, a really cool thing with Gina Rodriguez. So yeah, I like. I like indie films and I like film in general and I like that art form and visual art as much as I like music because it's all the same thing. It's all just creativity at a very high level. Have you been going to any concerts at all? Uh, No, I almost went to one this weekend, but I was busy with other stuff. I had to go to a birthday party for a 60th birthday party for a dear friend. Oh, that's fun. And do you go to movie theaters? Will you will you go and hang out at the movie theater? Watch yeah, movies? two of our sons worked at movie theaters, and uh, so we went to the movies uh, a lot. Yeah, I used to for, work at a movie theater. I worked yeah. at a movie theater in my hometown. Um, Muhammad Ali Lee used to come in. And really? we Yeah, and we would let him in for free he'd always say oh, i gotta pay he'd park his gold rolls royce right not in the front but close to the front park walk in and then he would buy everybody that was standing there popcorn candy sodas whatever that was the busiest whenever muhammad was there we were busy well i met the champ once um when he was in exile after he had been stripped oh. of his title wow. He was with the nation of islam and he was speaking at the elks club that night and there was a muslim steakhouse called Shabazz up by Syracuse University. And uh, I went there with another sports reporter in town. I had done radio um, for a number of years, had a little jazz show on Sunday jazz, uh, uh, for many years. And, and uh, I would lug my albums up two flights of stairs in orange crates and uh, spin records. And um, it was great, I loved it. Anyway, I did some sports uh, talk radio with a guy who was a play-by-play NBA announcer by the name of Jim McKechnie. And uh, we both went down to, to meet the champ, had a press conference at Shabazz, Shabazz's Steakhouse. And uh, I'll never forget meeting him. I mean, it was uh, it was electric. Yeah. And, and I had never seen charisma. Oh. Um, like, you know, he's just a global icon. He would stand there. Yeah, and radiated. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. 
he had that kind of energy, you know, and it was great. It was great. And it and it's just him. There was no air. It was just him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you had a radio. So you had a, a radio show. I didn't see. I don't know these things about you. I just knew you from the conferences. I'd say, hey, there's oh, there's Frank. Oh, let me give him a CD and run away really quick. <laughs> But you've always been kind to me and gave me time at which, you know, it's it's important as a vocalist in this in this art form of jazz, it's it's always a challenge. And there's only so many spots for so many concerts, Correct. for so many places to be played and be written yeah, about. One of, things, one of the things I worried about, I mean, when when we presented someone like Aretha, people were listening. If if we were presenting an emerging artist, you know, uh, or somebody who wasn't that well known, emerging kind of implies that they're just starting to break through on the national scene. That's how I define it. And um, people weren't always good listeners. And I thought that that was rude. And I thought, I don't want to subject vocalists to this <laughs> because if a crowd is there to not listen or they're there to party um i don't think it's fair to the musician no it throws artist. it throws us off because we're out there doing what we what our soul needs right to do but, yeah but, but see i think that's the challenge for presenters and i think we we come across this all the time um because uh, there are a lot of great singers out there, like yourself. And, you. you know, we don't have the number of slots right. to do that, to go around. So, you know, there are times that we have to um, play the hits. You know, we have to bring in a Diane Shure or, or a Diane Reeves or, you know. I mean, Thank Catherine you. Russell is somebody that people are listening to, but... That's because she's so unique and such a little powerhouse and a little dynamo. She's right. She's power. She is full she power. She cuts through. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we have to look for that, and and you know, and it's good for us to be able to talk about this because I don't think presenters and artists get the chance to exchange um, information or communicate with one another often enough. A lot of times somebody is, is looking for a gig and it's a quick conversation or a, a conversation, like you said, in a hallway at a conference and um, it's a passing moment. So we don't really have the chance to talk about this. One of the things that I regret is I was involved with all the Jazz Times conventions in Washington, New York City, Los Angeles, New Orleans, and, and a lot of the IAJE conferences, you know, we were nomadic for a while after Jazz Times let go of the conference, and uh, we, we aligned with IAJE before the big scandal, and I remember being up in Toronto, and I, I was saying, we have to get presenters and artists in a, in a two-person panel um, dialoguing with the, the audience totally. people are there for information right mm -hmm. but and my biggest single regret is that we were never never able to put that panel together that would be Joyce a camilla and i do you know Joyce D. Camilla? oh sure oh sure yeah yeah joyce and i talked about that for years and we couldn't get anybody to listen to us and we we knew that it was going to be an invaluable presentation for people and it was going to really help um so, you know, that's one of those unfulfilled dreams, but it might still happen. I think I've <laughs> done that with um, the Folk Alliance conference that happens, and they'll do, yeah. they do two hours of that, and they, they're they either presenters or programmers, radio programmers, and you get to do, it's like speed dating. You get a 15-minute boom, 15-minute boom, 15, and you sign up for as many as you can. And it's brilliant because we, I mean, as an independent label owner, and I've been doing it for over 20 years, I do most of it myself. You know, I have like, hi, I'm the, I like me. I'm the, I'm the promoter and I'm the manager and I'm the booking agent and I'm, oh, and I'm, I'm also the performer and here's my CD. And it's, it's a little intimidating when you are walking down the hall with, you know, um, 
Tim Jackson and, and whoever, you know, just, I'm not going to name names, but you know what I mean. And then you go up to them and go, hi, that's how I got in touch with Bill Royston. I literally ran up to him, you know, at like you guys are on a panel and then you get bombarded by a hundred of us all wanting yeah. to give you our CDs. Yeah. And he'll, I'll never forget. He's, I said, can you please, I'd like to give you my CD. And he goes, I'm flying back to Oregon today. Can you please send it to me and go, please, could you just take it with you now? I didn't know. I was like, you know, this kid. And he goes, and he stuffed it in his bag. And I got called like six weeks later. He said, I want you, you to want play to my festival. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. well, listen, the scenario that you described where you're wearing multiple hats and your booking agent and record producer and radio airplay promotions person and publicist and booking agent. And I worked at KJAZ at the same time. There you go. <laughs> in San Fran. Um, or is it Los Angeles? It was in Where Oakland. It? Well, it was in Oakland, Oakland and now there's a KJAZ down in LA. Okay. Yeah. Um, the famous, one of the most famous jazz stations in the world, right? Um, what I, I got... I'm sorry, I got sidetracked. I, I was just going to say, wearing all those hats is very commonplace in jazz. It is. And I've spoken to a gazillion artists who are in exactly in the same boat. And some, one of, you know, the problem is a lot of managers will not take on representation and a lot of booking agencies will not add people to their roster they can only go one deep with an instrumental group or one deep with a vocalist and you know somebody has to become bobby mcferrin in order to get on a roster it's 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 really a challenge it's it's un, and unfortunately it's um it's built in and baked into um the jazz side of the business yep. yeah and you there's know. Go ahead. I was just going to say there are so many talented people and you go to the conferences now. I, I didn't go this year. I didn't even go to the um, virtual one because I was, I don't know, I was doing something. I was, some, oh, I was up in Seattle, but um, I was working on a recording. Um, but it is overwhelming the amount of talent that will be in one room when you're at the conference or you're sitting in the bar yeah. at the Hilton Hotel and you go, oh, there's... Early conferences were 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 much different. The the, the ones we did in um, the seventies and eighties, the Jazz Times conferences, the early ones um, in D.C. and New York. What I loved about that is it, it was a hang. It was all of the practitioners. It was record label people, and it was radio people, and it was writers, and it was mostly musicians, you know, because they were welcomed and invited, and if we ever forget that it all starts with the people who create the music, then we're, we're, we have no business in this business, because it's all about the artists who make the music. It's all about the music and the people who create it, period. So, so the fact that we were able to hang out in a hallway and become friends um, really forged a lot of the relationships that I still have 40 years later. And that's why those get togethers were so important. So I important. Think some of that has been, some of that's been lost. Well, with the split of the conference and this, the, with uh, with the like you said the scandal and and such that did get lost but I have gone to um the connect is it Jazz Connect what's it called Isn't that yes called? Jazz Something Connect like that. and it's fun and you and the the after hour the hangs you know you you everybody yeah. runs into each other and but you guys and it is like family I see somebody that I haven't seen Al Pryor walks in the room and I just go my brother Al Pryor how you doing man I haven't seen you in a year but it almost it's like a it's like a class reunion in a, in a way it is he's great and he's he's been at Mac Avenue now for years and he's doing great things over there I was so honored he came to my festival you know um a couple of times and I thought wow what a thrill you know because he's cool. most of the time we spent together was in New York He's good people. You know, so when somebody from any 
anybody from the industry comes to your festival, you think it's the coolest thing in the world, man. Hey, man, when I see somebody in the in the audience at my show, even if I'm in, like Mark Ruffin will come to my show in, I do a show in New York in a place that it's 60 people. Mark's sitting right in the front row. I know I'm doing you know, something it, right. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, one night I went to see, uh, I'll, I'll never forget this, and I have to thank my friend Tim Drake for this uh, at the Roots Agency. Who, uh, Tim handled Richie, managed Richie Havens for many, many years. Not managed, but booked Richie for many years. And I presented Richie on multiple occasions. Richie Havens and I were great friends. And uh, it was really an honor. As a matter of fact, uh, for his home going, uh, at Bethel Woods, uh, Tim and I co-produced that. Wow. And, yeah, and um, that was fun. I mean, uh, what an honor. What, I, I, mean, I, I opened Gossett, for Louis him Gossett. once, twice. I opened for Richie twice, and when we met, we kind of melded together. We, we oh, just yeah. looked at each other's jewelry at first. We're like, oh, let me see your, oh, let me see your. Yeah. Yeah. He's, I listened you know, to like, him today. <laughs> Do you know uh, Do you know a group called the Rascals? Oh, of course. Yeah. Well, Felix Cavallari, my paisan, is a is a very dear friend, and I presented Felix, the lead singer. Yeah. Yeah. He and, wrote uh, He wrote a lot of that stuff. He wrote all that stuff. He's in the songwriters all of Right. Group. I met him at a songwriting a conference. Morning. Yeah. It's a beautiful yeah. morning. I sang that with him in a hotel room at at, at a songwriter. When you said his name, I went, I know that name. I know that name. Yeah. Rascals. Sure. He said to me, he said, um, I was, we were talking about Richie one day and he said, how does he play with all those rings? I don't know how he plays with all those rings. So anyway, I was going to go see Gil Scott Heron at BB Kings in New York. And, um, and I did, and I called up Richie and Leslie, uh, his significant other. And I said, can you guys come to BB Kings and see Gil Scott Heron? So that was an incredible night. I mean, those kind of things. You can't buy those kind of memories. I mean, I, I feel like I'm name dropping here, but you're not. You know, you're not. I'm not. I'm just. I love it so much, and to to have those memories is just remarkable. Really. I, f I feel that way too when I say, "Oh, and I did." You know, I opened for for Richie Havens. That's not name dropping. That's like me just. I opened for Richie you're Havens. You're proud of it. Yeah. You're proud of it. Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> You shared a stage. Yeah. Did you ever um, present Ella? No. No, but she was my favorite um, female jazz vocalist of all time. There's no question. Mine also. Um, for me, you know, it's not a contest. Everybody's different. Everybody's unique. Everybody has their own style and their own voice and their own signature that they put on and stamp they put on the music. So I love everybody for different reasons. But, uh, it, you know... When asked, do you have a favorite? Yeah. Yeah. It's Ella. Ella. Yeah. Ella, and I'm a, my big fan of, um, I'm just watching some things fly above my head. Nancy King. I love Nancy King. Yeah. I, I, yeah me too. Um, I, I'm trying to think of um, someone else who knocked me out. Like, I got to work with Sarah Vaughn for two weeks. Wow. At, uh, at the Blue Note, and uh, I produced the seventh anniversary of the Blue Note in New York, the New York Blue Note, before they were franchised all over the globe, and um, it was an amazing night. It was Sarah Vaughn and Billy Eckstein and Tony Bennett and George Benson. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and Jimmy Heath and Sir Roland Hanna and uh, Mark Whitfield. I mean, it was like uh, a ridiculous night. At the Blue and Note? I remember at the Blue Note. That's craziness. Yeah. yeah the, it the, was nuts. the 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 backstage isn't that big. The green room's not that big and big enough for all of them. There is no green room. Well, yeah. you know, I mean, there was no there was no dressing room. Upstairs dressing room. <laughs> right. I used yeah, to I, I used to walk Abby down those stairs every night, and she'd say, "I just don't want to fall down those stairs when I'm walking up under the stage." Do you do any Brazilian jazz? I do. do. You love Brazilian jazz. I love. Yes. Yeah. I present 
I'll tell you who I presented twice, and I, pres- I I don't know if you were in town at the time, but I presented him in Detroit and also in Syracuse. Ivan Leans. I love you know, Ivan. Ivan I'll post. I just oh, found my. a photo of Ivan and I today. Love Ivan. From too much talk to loving touches, sweet touches. I love Ivan. Yvonne Leans, you guys check him out. That is the out. greatest song of all time. I think so too. <laughs> that, so and, listen, that and my one and only you, love, they're my two favorite songs. Do you have, out, yeah, do you have outside lighting there? You know, very I'm, got, I'm very dark. Very dark. If I turn on the lights, can I turn on a light, Lisa? I got really tan all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, much better. We can see you, you now. On your I got a mosquito on my forehead. Thank you. Well, that's a problem. When you turn on the lights, yes. The mosquitoes come out. Well, they don't have too many mosquitoes here because they have a bat house. And the bats eat the mosquitoes. Well, you sound great. You really sound great. Your voice is in wonderful form. I love the fact that you break into song at any moment um, because everything is a song cue. And I love the fact that you can summon those up. I was very fortunate. I had a great relationship for a lot of years, a lot of years with Freddie Cole. Oh, wow. I love Freddie Cole. Yeah. Everybody loves Freddie Cole. I love Freddie Cole. He's a singer, you know, and uh, he's another one who the people, people just love, man, you know, and we lost him this year, yeah. and damn it, and, um, but he had 2,000 songs that he could call up, I mean, it was ridiculous. I sat at his feet, did, do you, there was a place in Seattle called Bake's Place, actually not in Seattle, a guy's house, a private club that this guy had in his house, in his basement. And I performed there, I think, three times with Andre and then once with a piano player and then Freddie Cole played in this guy's house. I flew up from the Bay Area to, can I come? Yeah, sure, come on in. It only seated maybe 40 people, tops, 35. Wow. Bakes place. So I would see him. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I think you and I could do this like a million times. Will you come back? I know. Over here, it's midnight. I know. I feel bad. I I think it's past my bedtime. Well, we do this in the morning. If you're if you're an eleven eleven a.m. person, you're welcome to that as well. Okay, that would be eight in the morning here. Okay. No, 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 no. Yeah, I would love to. No, it's eleven eleven a.m. and eleven eleven p.m. East Coast time. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I could do that. Yeah. I would love to come back. Good. If anybody wants to. I don't know that we uh, said anything of significance here, but I had a great time visiting with you and I had so much fun. Well, check out, you guys, check out um, Frank's page, Frank Malfitano. He's on Facebook. Google him. You're going to go, what? 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 (laughs) What? And You're too kind, man. Come back, man. You're too much For real. too kind. Much too kind. And know so. that other your friends will see this. I, I I will tag you in this, and this will be on your page. And so people can check it out. And next time, hopefully you won't have a phone at your ear. I'm so sorry, but I'm really I'm really thrilled that you were in an improvisational mood and went with it. That's what 1111 is all about. My, my, my arm's never going to work again, I, know. I think, after holding it in this position. Yeah. I... I've seen you hold up an iPhone for two hours, so I'm not going to complain. You're a real trooper, Jenna. Well, I love what I'm doing, and I will do it until I can't. Well, so. I think you'll do it forever. I will. It's just in your soul. It is. Yeah. And, and, and it might be an Italian thing. I mean, my mother used to sing in the house, in the kitchen, all the time. And she had a pretty good little voice, you know? I mean, so I grew up with that sound. I grew up with that sound. Uh, Nat King Cole was my first was my first teacher. Oh, listen. Uh, Thank you, Mom and Dad. I was just going to tell you. I was, no, I was just going to tell you the same thing. And, and maybe we'll save that for another time. But my uncle... Uh, Ralph, his nickname was Barney. He was in the Air Force, and when he went in the Air Force, he 
left behind all of his 78s, and he left behind Nat King Cole and Frank Sinatra. And those were the guys I grew up on, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then to work with Natalie and Freddie and meet Maria and uh, be backstage at a show with them at Carnegie, a tribute to Nat uh, that John Schreiber put together. I mean, you know, it, but the, when it comes full circle like that and brings you back to the beginning, it's pretty, uh, it's the windmills of your mind, yeah. you know? <laughs> Maybe next time you could sing a song for us. Oh, I would be intimidated because you are so great. Whatever. We'll work out a duet ahead of time. All right. Sounds good. Cool. Thanks, Frank. Have, Have a wonderful a night. You too. We'll see Bye. you again. Thank you so much for thank, having me. Let's thank fun. you. You're getting a standing ovation right now. Bye. <laughs> Italian man is here. Uh-oh. It is getting dark. Sorry about that earlier. It wasn't that cool, Patty? I know. Well, I have pizza waiting for me. Lisa made gluten-free, really beautiful pizzas. And we're going to eat some pizza. And I will, next time I do a show outside, I will definitely bring my light. I thought, oh, I won't need my light. But it did get a little bit... It's already starting to get darker quicker. I guess I just need to move to Canada. All right, kids. Gardenias, look. One more time with the gardenias. I didn't mean to do that. Just check it out. Check it out now. Thank you, Patty. <sighs> thank you, Julie. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, William. Thank you, Mama Grace. Thank you guys for being here. So yeah, maybe Frank will come back in the morning sometime. And tomorrow morning we'll be meandering. I think I'll... I don't know what I'm going to do yet tomorrow morning. It's all about meandering. If you have any ideas, let me know. Cheese. She, Lisa just said cheese. Now I have the letter C in my head. Cautious. No. Careful thoughts. Cautious words and a conscious heart. Thank you, Frank. Thank you very much. Big hug. And another big hug. And the dogs are starting to bark. That means the coyotes are probably out. Happy pizza. Thank you, you too, Carol. Ra Morocco. Thanks, you guys. Hey, Carol. Did you, did you already give away the, the paintings? If you didn't, can we see them sometime? Let us know. All right. Mama Grace, I love you. I'll see you in about nine seconds. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Be nice. Love hard. Really hard.